everybody and god bless so i had this dream a couple days ago and i've just been in constant prayer over this dream just to really get as much information as i can so in the beginning of this dream it was me and my mom and my my daughter she was in her stroller and i and i had her with me and we went to this church now we went to this church to really visit it and it felt like we were just doing that we were visiting churches to see like where they were spiritually i guess and at first this church was a, a good church it was okay but nothing was wrong with it and then they started singing this song and i didn't know what the song was so i was like sort of singing it a little bit and then i realized that this song was deck the halls from christmas and so i was like oh absolutely not and it happened so fast my mom and i didn't even like look at each other we both just had this decision like just leave like we literally as soon as i realized what song it was we both just turned around and started heading towards the exit and there was a lady there who i knew worked there and i knew it's like i had this understanding in the dream i had i was able to understand what was going on and i was able to like read minds i feel like and i knew she was about to ask us like why are they leaving or she was just thinking like why are they leaving so I said loud enough because like my mom was behind me and the reason why she was behind me is because like the pastor was in front of us and we were standing here's me and here's my mom and we both just turned at the same time so that's why she was behind me and so I said loud enough for my mom to hear me and I made sure I was loud enough for that lady to hear me and I said this is messed up like because I knew we were going to churches and I knew we purposely was going at this time because we wanted to try and skip the christmas and the holidays time like and even in the dream i was like it's june and so there's like no holidays really in june so i was like okay so there's we're definitely gonna skip holidays right and so i said loud enough for this lady to hear me i said it's june this is messed up i thought we could skip this stuff this kinds of things and now they've got it going on here and i said it loud enough for her to hear me because i wanted to plant that seed in her that she could hear you know that christmas is satanic and for her to get start thinking like why would they leave because of christmas so i wanted her to think you know i wanted to plant that seed and i was really hoping she could and that's why i said it loud enough for her to hear me and so we left because here a little leaven leavens the whole lump you don't just sit and wait for the church to get worse and worse and worse like no they were good and then they messed up on this one part and we left like there was no all this wait and talk to the pastor after no we, we left and so we leave and as we're leaving, we knew we had came in an entrance and we couldn't find the entrance. And so we were looking around trying to find the exit. And it wasn't like we were scared, frantic. Oh my goodness, we can't get out. We're like, we're, we're stuck. It was just like, we can't find our way out. But at the same time, let's also still look around and try and like figure out what's going on with this church. And it was like, we were judging it at this point. Like we're trying to like look around and just see what what more is about this church at the same time trying to leave like we still were like we need to hurry up and go like we're not gonna log lollygag but it's like kill two birds with one stone and so i noticed there was a downstairs and there was upstairs so we were like in the middle and i saw downstairs that there was the kid area and i instantly saw a vision of this large kid area and we used to go to this church in real life and that's how i felt i felt like that's the same like that downstairs area was the same and i instantly was like i feel like i've been here before and i was thinking about this church it's in illinois and it's called yellow box and i was thinking about that church at the time i didn't really like know the name of the church until i woke up and it originally recorded it. i was like oh yeah the church yellow box and so just to take a quick break that's one of the things that was confirmation for this dream because my sister so i'm going to take a quick break real quick from the dream my sister she had a dream yesterday and she posted it yesterday and in that dream at the end she talks about this man that she saw and in the dream she didn't recognize his face she couldn't see his face really well but that morning she i called her to me and i wanted her to see a picture of this guy and he's the pastor of the yellow box church and as soon as she saw it she was like oh my goodness i know him i i had a dream about him and i was like what and then that's when she tells me this dream and she's like in the dream this guy had an attitude with the fact that she was focusing on god and I was like, okay, that's confirmation that this is supposed to be a pastor and he is not fully okay with people really, really focusing on God. And that's not a man of God. 
so that was confirmation for this dream already and um and she, even when she recorded the dream, I still, because I was in shock, I did not tell her who he was. She, I don't even think, I don't think she still knows. I think I need to tell her. But I was just in shock and I heard it and ran in my mom's room because at the time my mom knew about the dream I had and she knew about the yellow box and all that stuff. And I was like, this is confirmation because of, you know. So I ended up, I still did not tell my sister who he was. And my sister was like, this like this man was bad in the dream she had she never even saw him before that day so that was confirmation of that really quickly i just want to say that and as we as i'm saying this church that i saw in my dream was starting to go bad and i saw the kid area and the kid area is the same kid area as the real yellow box in real life so just real quick i just believe i believe that this dream is against a lot of churches but i just saw this specifically at that moment i guess to get me to really thinking and things like that because we my family my mom and i we have had bad experiences at this church so i think it was just to help me more have a personal like okay this is a church because i haven't been to church in a very long time so there's just that i'm trying my best not to rumble on too much anyways so to continue after we saw this this downstairs we went on and i looked upstairs and i can see up the stairs i saw the pastor and i didn't see the same pastor that is a pastor of the yellow box church so that's why i believe this church this dream was about different churches because the pastor i saw he was actually a brunette and i could see the back of him and i overheard him and the people the congregation like everyone by one they would come up to him and they would be like jesus um said they would say jesus said and then he would say, I come in the flesh. And then they would say, Jesus said. And then he'd say, I come in the flesh. And then all of a sudden, it stopped becoming Jesus said. And he would say, I come in the flesh. It became, I come in the flesh. It stopped saying, Jesus said. And I had it knowing that some of the people knew. They were in their head like, I thought, it's Jesus said. I come in the flesh. And then other people, they did not know that part. So they're thinking, wait, so is he Jesus? He's come in the flesh? Like they're starting to believe in his pastor as jesus and i instantly had a knowing this church this was good at first added in this little leaven now they're about to become an occult so i really was like we really need to hurry up and get out of here so as we're walking i saw this family and they were next to me and i could hear their thoughts i could hear their voice even like i could just hear everything that was going on i could hear their feelings even and it was a mom a dad a brother and a sister and the brother and sister, they were like, we want to dress like pigs. And so all of a sudden, they were all like pigs. And it, this costume was perfect. They literally looked like pig people. There was no seams in it or anything like that. It was perfect, like on them. And because they were still on two, so it was like pig people, I guess. And um, they, had, they still had on their church outfit and things like that. And the wife was extremely overweight but the husband was extremely skinny like extremely complete opposite <laughs> and he looks he's looking at his wife and his family and i could feel he's just upset like he does not like his family and his wife looks at him and she's like you need to pick me up and he's like what and he said out loud like how dare you but in his head it was just even more it was because he mumbled it underneath his breath so i'm not sure if she heard him but in his head and how he's feeling he was like how dare she like is she like how, what like i'm skinny you're fat like what do you? like that's how he was feeling sorry but he was like absolutely not and he just walks off in the middle of her like looking at him and smiling because i guess she didn't hear him and she's like you need to pick me up thinking that he's gonna do it he just walks off so instead of like being hurt by it she just act like it didn't happen she turned around she's all googly and smiley and i instantly had a knowing in the dream that that part meant like don't judge a book by its cover do not you know jesus told us do not judge by appearance judge righteous judgment this family is supposed to be this nice loving family but in reality you know the husband doesn't like his wife he doesn't even like his children the mother is acting like nothing's happened she doesn't even care her kids already walked off in front of him so it's like they were dishonorable i guess and then on top of that this pig outfit i believe represents gluttony and gluttony is definitely a sin that can lead into other sins and things like that so i believe even though just the mother was showing that she may have been in gluttony 
and the husband was very very skinny you can be skinny and deal with gluttony problems okay you can be young just like little two little kids and have gluttony problems so i do believe this whole entire family is representing gluttony and the fact that they just it's like they didn't it didn't phase them like they wanted to they wanted to be in pick problems so they was fine they really love living in this gluttony so there was that and then we continue on and there was a little like stage area over to the left and on the stage area there was this stand like a mannequin type stand um it looked like a mannequin but it didn't have the head part i um and it just had like the body part and it was small enough for like baby's clothes so and then on the side of it so let me see so let's say this is the stand and then the stage is like there and it's like on the stage so on the side of it right here my daughter's dress was laying on it and i instantly like saw like i guess like a vision or something the dress like going on and off and on and off but in reality like in the dream it was just laying on but i saw like this church wanted it to be on that stand they wanted that and the stand had shoes on it and so and i looked at this dress and my mom she went to pick it up for a second because like we were like oh isn't that charity's dress and um i was like yeah that is charity's dress and so she ended up putting it back down because i was like she doesn't need it like she's grown out of it she's she's bigger now she needs more things she needs other things that she needs but that she doesn't really need it anymore and i had a knowing i didn't really like give it away they just had it so that's why i was like how do they have it but um anyways so then the shoes i had a knowing that and i said in the gym so last time we were here so apparently we have been there before and i was like last time we were here charity showed up and she messed up the shoes and i looked at my mom and said can you please just you know fix them and fix them on there and so just to explain that really quickly mannequins represent dead deadness and as i saw like this church was dead this is a dead church and shoes represent the garments and you know the gospel so it's like charity as we've seen multiple times my daughter is a strong woman of god strong child of god and so it's like she knew like this is a fake church this is a fake church and so she's like no this is a judgment against them and that's why she messed up their shoes because it's like no this 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 so-called gospel you guys are trying to do is not is not working okay and then i believe me asking my mom to fix it it's like yes this bad gospel they were doing before now was messed up so now let's fix it mom can you please try and help them like help fix it and a couple days had passed after i had this dream i think it was yesterday because i had this dream oh wait, no i think i had it two days ago so it was just yesterday anyways and i felt in my spirit the reason why i asked my mom to to fix the shoes is because of the fact that i've been shown that i have i'm getting a new job in god to help saints to help them along and help them encourage them to do you know more things with god and i believe i was just asking my mom so she still had a right to say no so i was just asking her like hey um can you please help this church and she was like yeah yeah i'll help this church and it wasn't like a burden it wasn't anything like that it was just like yeah let's let's try and help them let's try and help the shoes help fix the shoes back but we still wanted to get out of this church and away from these things so i think it was more like help not really the church but help the people who've been affected by the church um anybody who wants to come and ask questions about you know this false doctrine they've received let's help them and help them lead them the right way so i think that's what that meant like they received this false doctrine they have questions let's help them and so then the dress dress as you know that's clothes so we know that that represents the gifts and things that we receive from god and like i said i've seen that my daughter is a powerful woman of god and um like i said before i did a recording of this dream already and i explain what i do for my daughter and how i help her spiritually so if i feel led then i will probably add that clip in separately and tell you guys like how i help charity and lead her with christ but anyways so i believe that that was showing that this church is like 
well, we want these gifts and we want this and we want these things, but we can't really get them. But we're trying to either act like we have it or we're trying to get it, even though we are a, a mannequin and we're dead in this church and we just, it's just not working. So I believe that that's what that meant. Like they want these gifts, but they can't have them. <laughs> okay. Um, so then, cause I believe that's why it was like laying next to the mannequin. It wasn't on the mannequin. It was not a part of this church. It's next to it cause they want it, but they can't have it. So then To continue with the dream, this little girl saw the mannequin and I had a knowing she also, she wanted these clothes and she wanted to wear them. And it wasn't like she was coveting after my daughter. It was more like she wanted a connection with God. She wanted to be better with God. And I had a knowing, like in my head, I was like, I want to help her. I had sympathy for her. Like if she comes to me, I will help her. And I knew that. And even though she was a kid, she did not have her parents with her. I was like, if she asks me, I will help her. And so that was the end of the dream. But I just want to explain that part real quick. And I just want to say something, you know, this world is just getting worse and worse. And it's because of the new generations coming in. It's because there's so many professing saints that are afraid to minister to children even if they're not theirs the thing is we answer to god he is our father i don't answer to that child's parents i don't care if you're saying i'm forcing my beliefs honey you're forcing your atheism you're forcing satanic beliefs on your own children how is that worse than me just saying oh hey you know god created us you know go find a bible go, like you have a choice to go read but children nowadays are literally being forced into the satanic agenda so if a child comes to you and they're asking you hey can you please help me i want to understand christ don't be like oh is your parents around are they gonna care is it is it okay if i teach them like no this is god this is their salvation now it was a scripture I don't have my Bible on me, but there's a scripture in Deuteronomy and I plan to put it up there. And it talks about how the father and the son, you do not, you know, hurt the son because of the father's sins. You don't hurt the, the father because of the son's sins. Or we all go to go separately. Our sins are separately from each other. Okay, so it doesn't matter what that parents, what they want for their children. I don't care. Okay. You're not going to drag your child down to hell with you. And then I'm not going to get in trouble because their blood is on my hands because I was afraid of what the mom would say. No, we minister. We help children because if nobody, if we're not helping children, Satan is. Well, he's hurting them. He doesn't help people. But still, so there's that. And I also want to point out the church. I have talked to people before who say, I can't leave my church because I am a deacon. I can't leave my church because I am um, in charge of this and I'm in charge of that and all these things. I, I can't leave because it's like a job and I can't leave because, you know, I get these benefits. Leave. Because at the end of the day, what profit is a man to gain the whole world but to lose his internal soul? And that's the same thing. As saying, I can't leave this fake church or I can't even minister and help this fake church and help them, you know, understand that they're being taught false doctrine because I'm afraid to leave. You can't do that because it's, it's your soul at the end of the day. That's when you want to be a little selfish, okay? And say, hey, am I messing up my soul just to please a few people? then leave okay it's not it's not hard all right now i did mention this pacific church yellow box um it is in illinois they have a few of them and i want to say real quick please do not get caught up on okay that's just that church that church is just an example okay i looked into this church and i went through their website and i went through their facebook and i'm telling you after going through everything honestly the only thing if i if i was a sinner the only thing i would feel led to do is pay the church and get baptized i wouldn't know why i was getting baptized well actually they say they get baptized for public they say you want to take your faith public get baptized so 
so I wouldn't get baptized for the right reasons but um that that's that's the only thing I feel all right there wasn't really anything on there that was like how to get led by God by yourself and they even separated church people versus unchurched people and to me that's blasphemous okay so there's that so be very very careful with churches you go to and what they believe in and everything like that it, that little leaven especially if you do have an op if you do have the ability to be able to talk to the pastor directly you know separately and be like hey so you said this in the sermon but this is actually what it means and if that pastor genuinely is like i did not know that and i genuinely want to change i genuinely want to like lead my congregation to the right way then i believe you know you can help but as in my dream i do believe that this pastor his intention was to mess up was to hurt the people and so that's why i believe that we literally was just like let's just leave and that's why it was like fix the shoes because that's the false doctrine we're fixing the false doctrine which means that those people if they came to us separately and was like hey can you please help then sure we can help but i believe that this this pastor in my dream was just a lost cause so and like i said downstairs was yellow box but the pastor himself was a different pastor so that's why i'm saying i believe that this dream represents more than that one church so please 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 don't get stuck on okay that's just that one church no it's have discernment pray about it you know and fix with that and then the gluttony you know just because you're not showing it in public just because you're not showing it does not mean you're not dealing with it internally and then also be careful not to judge by appearance, but judge by righteous judgment. And that's how it is with everything. You see a family that seems all happy and joyful and all that stuff. I don't know what's going on behind closed doors. I don't know what's going on behind your spiritual closed doors. So I don't, I'm not going to sit here and be like, wow, you must be such a great and powerful woman of God or man of God, family of God. I'm not going to do that because I don't know where you are. It's crucial that we stop judging people by their appearance. It's crucial that we stop saying, well, you're not of God because you look like this or you are of God because you look like that. Do you have any idea how many Jezebels are in this world right now who don't wear makeup, who are covered head to toe? Like, seriously. <laughs> so we cannot judge by appearance. All right. And there was a time in the Apocrypha book where Satan came to Abraham and Isaac as an old man, as an old crippled old man, looked like a normal old man. And he was Satan. So do not judge by appearance. All right. And and then the last part that I want to point out is the woman who I saw just planting that seed. And in the dream, I planted that seed and I kept on going. So, you know, try to plant as many seeds as you can. Do not be silent when you're talking about things of God. There's been tons of times when I'm talking to somebody about God and they're whispering, but I didn't whisper because I knew there were other people around that I could possibly be ministering to. You never know who's around you that can hear what you're saying. So that's why it's also crucial if you're supposed to be the saint of God and you're sitting there saying things that are not of God and somebody else can hear you. And you could be just be joking with your people and to you too, it's like, yeah, this is just a joke, it's fine. But somebody else could think you're being serious. And it's just, you know, like be careful with who you are around and like we should always be trying our best to like plant seeds and things like that so already so that's all i want to say but i really 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 want to make sure that we got the points the point is little leaven leavens a whole lump so if you are in a church that is going south i need you to go north and get up out of there second thing plant your seeds and just plant it and keep on going plant keep going plant keep going pray that somebody else waters it our job is to plant the seed or water somebody else's seed so <laughs> yeah um second thing that's what i want to say this is very important be careful be very very careful with churches there was somebody that i know um that came and they were singing a song and i knew it was worldly and i said to them i said what are you doing that's a worldly song and they said but my church sings it and i used to go to a church that would sing a worldly song i believe it was in ohio that would sing a worldly song right before service started and I don't even think they told people it was worldly. I knew it was worldly because I was in the world at the time. So, and I knew my mom knew it was worldly because we were all, you know, asleep and in the world at the time. So, just be very, very careful with things like that, you know, especially now that we have like iPhones. I don't know if Androids do it, but you can easily scan a song you hear singing and 
be like, okay, what song is this? Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So a little love and love is the whole lump, especially with churches doing worldly music, worldly things. Get out of there. All right. Is gluttony, judging by appearance. Don't do it. All right. The fifth thing is these dead churches out here. Okay. They're dead. The only way they can come to life is with Jesus alone. All right. So we need to get away from these dead churches. And also for them to even have the dress in the church shows that they are showing signs. They're showing, you know, certain signs, but they're not right because they're not theirs. So that means if, the, if you have something that's not yours, you're not using it right. So that, I hope that makes sense. So even though they were showing signs and things like that, they're not using it right. Things are things are not going. It doesn't fit them. It's not it's not right. All right. And then the shoes being fixed. You know, people coming out of these churches, they're not a lost cause. If they it ministers to the ones who have ears, if they have ears, let them hear. Now, granted, they took the mark. Don't even try. But still, help people get them on the right track. And then the sixth thing to me is very very important is that child ministering to children remember the scripture about raising up a child in the way that they should go and they would not depart from it all right so we need to help these children there is no excuse i don't care what anybody says there's no excuse not to minister to your children not to minister to people unless they took the mark anyways <laughs> there's no excuse especially your own children and i have a playlist about protecting the children i believe one of those videos i talked about how i saw a vision of these demons trying to whisper in my my daughter's ear um, when she was very very young and so now i really really help her so yeah i am going to go ahead and add that clip in about what i do to help her uh, now she does listen to the actual bible not a kid's Bible, the KJV Bible, before she goes to bed, as she's falling asleep, nap time, bedtime, whatever. And then I just, I don't feel like moving the camera, but I just bought a Ten Commandment thing that I put on my wall and I plan to try to say that to her every day. And that is something that we are commanded to do in Deuteronomy. Uh, we were told to tell our children god's laws and statutes and commandments every day just talk about it before we go to bed when we wake up when we're just walking down the street just just talk about it eventually and then eventually your children will come to you and be like hey so why do we do this and that's when you're like okay well we do this because you know god saved us from egypt and so for us now that we're right with christ it's like i believe saying like okay now it's time to move on now it's time to tell her why why do we do this well we do this charity because jesus died on the cross for our sins and he died on the cross for our sins because he loves us and that is something i've been praying about a lot like how do i teach my child of god do i just whatever and i believe that god is literally leading me in the steps like what to do of teaching her yeah. about god so god said alrighty guys so god bless y'all have a nice <laughs>